Hi, this is Cheryl of Majestic Wire Artworks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this petite fancy bar necklace. Actually, it's a bar for a necklace. So I'm not going to show you how to put the chain on and everything, but in the title, it's going to say that anyways. And this video is uh, being made for my craft along group. And uh, I just wanted to say hi to you guys. And so what I'm going to use in this video is one piece of 20 gauge wire that is one foot long and one piece that is two feet long and that's all you're going to need besides your beads and um, the beads I'm using today these are blue cat eye beads but today I'm going to use some uh, fire agate and um, all that fire means is it's been fired gotten hot and then put in cold water to make it crackle like this and in in some instances it's called dragon vein um, agate and this is a, a matted finish so it's got a, kind of got a white powdery finish over it and so it just shows the white shows off the veins in a different way so uh, what you're going to need for whatever beads you choose to use is for the center you're going to need a 10 millimeter bead and for the two side beads on each side you're going to need a six millimeter beads so one 10 millimeter four six millimeter and if you wanted to experiment you could do a 10 millimeter bead and an eight millimeter bead it wouldn't have um quite as dramatized effect as having the big center though and it would make it a little bit longer I just I chose this because I just like the look that it gave so let's um, begin so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your 12 inch piece of 20 gauge dead soft copper and you're going to give it a bend um, at five inches so you're going to have the five inches in your hand here and we're going to be working with the seven inches up here and we're going to start with making a loop and um, we want a fairly small loop bigger than you would for an earring but just big enough that it's it's a nice size for a necklace because you don't want a big and bulky for this so um, I just I think mine's about two to three millimeters and then you make your loop and and you wrap it twice so it's gonna look like it's got three wraps yeah I'm fighting with the table with this one as long as it doesn't whip me in my face I'm happy okay and two and then we want we want it to um, be perpendicular to the front so we want the loop to be like this and the wire to be like this okay so this is the bead wire and this is um, a wire we're going to use to wrap. We're actually going to do the C wrap to um, give the bar extra strength as well as hold the beads where we want them today. So you want to take now on the shorter wire put one of your six millimeter beads and I just want to double check that you've wrapped it twice there see it kind of looks like three wraps but it's actually only two and now I'm going to wrap this hug it around the bead at the side like that and now normally we just wrap around once I want you to wrap around twice so we're going to be consistent with two wraps because we want to put some space between the beads so once and twice and now the wire is going to be at the opposite end this time and I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to 
cinch this up. It's hard to do for the first bead for sure. And now I'm going to take my second six millimeter bead. Well, I picked, I did this on purpose. I picked one pink and white and then one really light bead. And I want to make them um, similar on both sides. So I almost goofed up there. So if you have differences in your beads, um, you got to pay attention to the order you put them in. If you have one that doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter. So now I'm going to wrap around that bead like that. And two wraps around the wire. Okay. So now I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and push it down again. Okay. Now you want to take your 10 millimeter bead and put it on. And the same process. Two wraps. Oops. Did I get that right? Hug it in, cinch it up, okay. Now another six millimeter bead and I wanna take my lighter bead. One wrap. Two wraps and my last bead. And two. This time, yeah, do we want two wraps? I can't remember what I did with that one. I think I'm just doing one wrap. now and then I'm going to snip it off in the front so it's just bring it up real close one wrap like that snip it off now I'm only crimping it in not to keep the edge in but just because I'll probably be wrapping up to it or over it because now now I thought of it you could have done two wraps I think that's what I did because I remember bending it now sorry about that I actually designed this a couple days ago I've been dealing with some uh, migraine headaches and you just can't make a video when you've got a migraine. So I'm going to uh, point out as I always, um, you want to keep your loops consistent so that your piece looks better. Because if you have one big, one small, it really looks funny. So best to try and remember where you, where you did it. Okay. And now I'm going to wrap... I'm going to wrap twice because I think I, or, or until you run out of room and it should, hopefully you've got enough distance that you can get your wires in at the end of the necklace. I think it's, I think it's going to be okay. Snip that off. And again, this, this will be covered again. But I'm just going to tuck it in anyways, just to make it sm smaller in size. Okay, so now I'm just going to make sure my C-wraps are all level. Now, we're going to be bending this later, and they will distort on you. Um, don't worry about that. 
The only reason we're doing this was to keep the spacing and make it extra strong. Extra wire for strength. Okay, so also, if you didn't want to go the next step and just curve it like this, guess what? That's pretty as a necklace too. So there's a second option for you. And uh, But right now, we're going to go the next phase of making this. So what I want you to do is take your two foot piece of 20 gauge dead soft copper and fold it in half like this. It doesn't have to be exact. And what we're doing is we're not going to cut it. We're just folding it in half. And this is a little trick of mine. Okay, we're going to be wrapping this and we're starting from the middle. And if you had two separate pieces of wire and trying to do it, it's a nightmare. So what I do is I keep them joined here and snip them off later. And then it just holds them together for you and it makes it so much easier to work with. So what now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, it's still gonna be challenging, but not nearly, trust me. So you're gonna try and guess about the middle of these two wires and it doesn't have to be exact. And you're gonna just flip it around like this. And we're gonna wrap once around that. And come up like that. And now I'm flipping it upside down because I want to just feel like I can control it better to curve around the bead with the two wires like that and, and, and it's gonna have separation between there um, this one did so if it moves on you don't get exasperated and then wrap around once more so when it's right side up and see I didn't get it centered at all and I'm hoping I'm, I'm okay with that maybe I should have marked where the center was if I run I don't think I'm gonna run out of wire but Okay, so the reason why I do this instead of my traditional way where I go zigzag back and forth is we want mirrored loops and it's almost impossible to make mirrored loops when you're coming from different directions. Excuse me. So this will be more challenging. And I did a double loop like this here and I might end up doing the same thing. I want to try and make it a little bit different. These ones are round. I want to try and make the top one a little bit higher and maybe a little bit oval. So, but the first thing I did was um, on the right hand side, I make a small loop first and I do it counterclockwise for the right side I do it counterclockwise so it's going in towards the bead and we want it over the wire see just a little tiny loop like that and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side but we're going to go clockwise so that they're mirrored okay so that's what it looks like they're not perfect I'm not expecting them to be perfect. This is a form, this is finger swirling after all. So now I'm gonna try and make it taller. And I might not succeed. So I'm going to put my fingernail there. And to make it more oval. See like that? I'm hoping that makes a difference. Okay, so now let's see if it's easier to you to do the round one by all means um, a smaller see the difference so it's it's not a dramatic difference but it's just very subtle okay now I'm gonna try put my nail in there again try and get it about the same size Okay, I think that's pretty similar. 
and now we're gonna take I'm working on the right side again we're gonna take this and just arch it gently and we're going to put a little loop right in the center between those two beads it if you notice here it didn't cover uh, the wrapping and that's okay um, and that could be because we did the arching it might have had it done it first we just want to do it so that it's similar on both sides that's the goal more than anything just another tiny loop right between the two beads okay just like that and now I'm going to do the opposite side the same way so I'm going to do an arch gentle arch and then put my loop right there and I apologize if my fingers are over top of the work but there's it's impossible for me to not have my fingers on it to do finger swirling okay now I notice that the shape of this is changing And I notice that it's tightened up and it's circular, circularized the loop. So all my effort with making an oval was just taken away. But that's okay. I'm going to be happy with it. Sometimes we just have to go with the flow. So next time if I do it and try it again, I might make an even more exaggerated oval. Because when you make this, it tugs on it and shrinks it. Okay. So the next step, I'm on the right hand side again, is I'm going to wrap around. I'm coming from the top and going down underneath like that to anchor it. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing. I've got it upside down now so that the left side is on the right side. I'm going to try and push this wire. Now the other one didn't do this to me. But there, I pushed it like that. And I used the round nose pliers because uh, if you use the um, chain nose pliers, you'll put a kink in it. And the round keeps things round. Okay, so I'm going to support this as best I can and arch this and come up. You notice the wires twisted. Okay, and come around, supporting it. Okay, so this is what it looks like right side up. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to snip these ends and I'm going to tuck them in with a curve so that um, the ends are not going to poke anybody. So I'm going to cut it hmm, five or six millimeters, probably six in length. I'm going to do both at the same time. Now I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to put a bend at the end. And I'm pulling it back and tucking it in so that the ends are going to go inside. And we, I kind of did it a little short. I could have had them a little bit longer. So... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a loop at the end instead. I'm going to fix a mistake, which basically just tucked it in anyways. So. Okay. Can be challenging. You just do the best you can. Crimp it in. I 
just make sure there's no pokies and there isn't there so got to be happy with that and now I've got it flipped upside down for the other one and working the opposite direction this one's a little bit longer so it's going to work and tuck those ends in so I must have just snipped that one set just that much too short make sure it is tucking in once you got it you're good you're golden okay no sharp edges push the wire facing the right directions Okay, so then the next stage is to arch your bar to give it that curved look. And you might have to flatten your swirls as you go. And there, it's done. That's all there's to it. So the next thing you would do is you would use uh, either... Um, infinity link like I make or um, jump ring to add your chain onto or if you have a chain where the links open up you can put the chain directly onto there and voila there's your necklace and I'm going to put a chain on it and um, on both of them for my photograph um, and then take a photograph of them with the chains on as the cover for the video. Well, thank you for joining me in this video, and we will see you in the next one. Bye for now.